Good morning all. Today's class is on elements of yeast genetics. So this yeast or the simple eukaryotic model organisms. We know that uh, Saccharomyces cerevisiae or commonly used uh, yeast organism in the food industry for bakery as well as brewing purposes, right? So these Saccharomyces cerevisiae or the alcohol producers, okay? And uh, they are used in brewing and baking for millennia. And this is the favorite organism for molecular biologists as well, okay? Uh, and if you see that this Saccharomyces cerevisiae are known as budding yeast because they undergo asexual reproduction uh, through budding process. So in this image, you can see the buds of the Saccharomyces cerevisiae. So this is the uh, old bud and you can see the newer bud which is just emerging. If you see the buds normally develop close to the last bud, okay? So this, this bigger one is the uh, previous bud. You can see the erupting bud which is close to the uh, last bud, okay? And uh, uh, this is the uh, oldest domesticated organism, of course, right? And if you see that, uh, in addition to the budding yeast, there are fission yeasts as well. The, the common example is the um, Schizosaccharomyces pombe, okay? So this Schizosaccharomyces pombe or fission yeast, so they reproduces through fission, that is the asexual reproduction of the cell division, okay, occurs through fission okay so remember schizosaccharomyces pombe or the fission yeast so they are also the powerful model organism okay whereas the saccharomyces cerevisiae or budding yeast okay because the asexual reproduction occurs through budding process which is the asymmetrical uh, division okay so in addition to this uh, if you see that uh, there are ascospore formation occurs in the yeast as well. So that is why they belong to ascomycetes because the ascus uh, fruiting body is being produced in yeast. Okay. So you can see here the yeast ascus with the spore tetrad. Okay. And if you see these um, ascospores are formed after meiotic division, after meiotic division. So this East, uh, these yeast cells have haploid uh, phase of life cycle as well as diploid phase of life cycle. Okay, so the diploid yeast cells undergo meiosis, that is the sporulation stage during poor nutrient condition and all. So those um, uh, sporulation um, creates the formation of the ascospores. So if you see this, the ascospores are generally found in clusters of four or eight spores within a single mother cell called the ascus. Okay, these ascospores are formed as a means of packaging post-meiotic nuclei. And they represent the gametic stage in the life cycle of this yeast fungi. Okay, and um, the creation of these specialized um, cells require a cell division mechanism which is distinct from the vegetative growth of cell, fungal cells. Okay, And uh, this yeast is the favorite uh, organism for uh, molecular biologists. If you see this Saccharomyces cerevisiae and as well as this uh, Schizosaccharomyces pombe, um, they are very much used in various molecular biological studies as well. Okay. So here in this image, you can see the haploid phase uh, life cycle of Saccharomyces as well as diploid phase uh, life cycle of the Saccharomyces. So this diploid life cycle is shorter and uh, this diploid cells, right, which I'm pointing the diploid cells under poor nutrient condition undergo meiosis, which is the sporulation stage, which forms the four haploid spores. On germination, the haploid cells would be formed okay so uh, remember uh, there exist uh, two mating types of the uh, saccharomyces cerevisiae cells one is the a cell and the other one is the uh, alpha cells okay so these alpha cells on budding that is through uh, asexual reproduction uh, perpetuates into 
many alpha cells similar with the A cells okay so on mitosis right so which is the usual asexual reproduction um, which is occurring under good nutrient condition which generally occurs with the uh, consumption of the uh, carbon and nitrogen sources okay so only under uh, poor nutrient condition the sporulation of the diploid cells occurs okay and if you see uh, the mating occurs between alpha cell with the a cell okay so which results in the uh, diploid cells okay uh, which is the sexual reproduction right so this diploid cells on meiosis would uh, like uh, on meiosis forms the haploid spores whereas this diploid cells can also undergo mitosis so where in which uh, the diploid cells would um, undergo uh, budding process and diploid cells would be uh, perpetuated okay through asexual mode of uh, reproduction so which is quite shorter okay um, <clears throat> if you see that these yeast cells can also have that mating type switching event wherein which the uh, alpha cells to A cells a cells to alpha cells interconversion occurs which we'll see in the upcoming slide okay so if you see about this saccharomyces cerevisiae they have simple growth requirements and these yeast cells are inexpensive and easy to grow in the laboratory uh, and if you see the unbudded uh, yeast cells so they are approximately 5 micrometer in diameter between uh, the size range of a bacterian bacteria and the human cells and uh, these saccharomyces cerevisiae and as well as this schizosaccharomyces cerevisiae they can be cultured in plates right and uh, mutants can be raised mutants can be raised oxotrophic mutants antibiotic resistant mutants can be raised from this saccharomyces cerevisiae and genetic manipulation is easier with this uh, saccharomyces cerevisiae cells right um, and if you see these yeast dogs similar to bacteria they can also be freezed under minus 80 in glycerol and they can be freeze dried as well as stored under room temperature in plates and all and they can they have to be subcultured in order to stored at room temperature right and if you see uh, in nature in nature these yeast or abundance in vineyards but can also be found associated with oak trees and other natural habitats okay uh, if you see the haploid phase of the uh, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, these cells of the haploid phase, they can be used to study the uh, recessive mutations, okay? Uh, recessive mutations, the, mut if the mutations are recessive, right? Uh, that is, they cannot be, uh, the mutations, the alleles cannot be expressed under the heterozygous condition, okay? So, those recessive mutations, can be studied with by using the haploid phase cells of the yeast so that is the main advantage okay so if you see the diploid cells of saccharomyces cerevisiae they have to n equal to 32 chromosomes so the haploid cells would have n equal to 16 so 16 chromosomes are present in the haploid cells okay whereas the diploid cells will have 16 pairs which are 32 chromosomes okay so the genome size of the saccharomyces cerevisiae is approximately 12 mb okay approximately 12 mb so uh, this saccharomyces cerevisiae has around 6000 genes in this at least 20 percent of the human genes are known to have the roles and disease and have functional equivalence in the cell uh, if you compare uh, uh, saccharomyces cell to the human cell um, if you see that uh, there are um, if you compare okay an yeast and a human protein which are quite comparable they overlap by 32 percentage okay on an average so if you see on an average the amino acid sequence of the comparable yeast and human proteins overlap by 32 percentage okay so which has demonstrated that um, they they can be a good this uh, saccharomyces cerevisiae can be a good model organism to study uh, many human proteins as well so and this saccharomyces cerevisiae has demonstrated that many human diseases 
result from the disruption of very basic cellular processes such as DNA repair, cell division, control of gene expression, and the interaction between the genes and environment. Those processes and all can be studied using the Saccharomyces cerevisiae cells. Okay. Mm, with that uh, appropriate laboratory strains. Okay. So this um, yeast, right? Uh, if you see that they can be cultured in the complete medium known as YEPD, which is yeast extract peptone dextro dextrose. Okay. So which is the complete medium for the yeast growth. Okay. This is not a minimal medium. This YEPD is the complete medium for the yeast growth. If you see uh, the minimal medium, okay, this minimal medium will have the um, nitrogen base. They have the nitrogen base, okay, nitrogen uh, containing salts as well as carbon sources, okay, but it would be without the amino acids. So they have various range of amino acid mixes. For example, if a particular Saccharomyces cerevisiae strain is a lucin minus oxytroph. Okay, lucin minus oxytroph. Then they would have the uh, nitrogen base. Okay, then uh, for that oxytroph, for that lucin minus oxytroph to grow in the plate, right? They it require uh, minimal media, and in that minimal media, the lucin amino acid has to be added because it's a lucin minus oxytroph so the lucent amino acid has to be added okay so we know that these oxytrophs are um, mutants for the particular uh, nutrient biosynthesis enzyme okay and if you see that the lucent minus oxytroph lacks the enzyme for the biosynthesis of lucent amino acid okay so oxytrophic mutants of this Saccharomyces cerevisiae has mm, wide range of applications in the uh, basic uh, molecular biological studies. Okay, so similar to E. coli, uh, this Saccharomyces cerevisiae cells in this Saccharomyces cerevisiae cells, the oxytrophic mutants can be raised. Okay, if you see the bacterial aspects of yeast, okay, uh, so. They are single-celled organisms, Saccharomyces cerevisiae or single-celled eukaryotic organism, right? And the haploid growth phase of cells exist. And uh, the recessive mutations can be studied with the haploid phase of cells. And they are fast growing. If you see the doubling time, it is around 90 minutes, around 1.5 hours on the rich media. If you say on the uh, YPD media, right? So on the rich media its doubling time would be around 1.5 hours and they have uh, uh, moderate growth media requirements and uh, the genetic transformation and gene replacement are easier with this saccharomyces cerevisiae cells okay if you see the various processes such as cell cycle mitosis meiosis gene regulation processes metabolic processes, cell-to-cell -cell signaling processes, cell specialization, cytoskeleton organization, intracellular transport mechanisms, compartmentalization processes. So these molecular biological processes can be studied using the laboratory strains of the yeast. Okay. So if you see about the uh, nutritional requirements of this Saccharomyces cerevisiae cells it depends upon the um, type of cells if you see that the wild type Saccharomyces cerevisiae exist as prototroph uh, and even oxytrophic uh, Saccharomyces cerevisiae cells are there okay so we will see what is the difference between the oxytroph and a prototroph okay oxytroph and a prototroph okay so if you see that uh, this uh, prototrophic uh, yeast right the prototrophic organisms so they can be cultivated in the 
simple minimal media okay this minimal media has the minimal growth requirements for the uh, in case of yeast the minimal requirement grow minimal growth requirement for the yeast cells to grow okay so this minimal media generally consist of consist of the nitrogen salt a simple usable carbon source and the other uh, mineral and trace element requirements okay so with that uh, usable carbon source and the um, nitrogen media with the nitrogen salts they can uh, these prototrophs can synthesize the um, amino acids and nucleic acids precursors from that simple usable carbon and uh, nitrogen source okay so that is why this phototrophs can be cultivated in the minimal media whereas this oxytrophs cannot be cultivated in the minimal media because this oxytrophs are mutant for the particular uh, nutrient biosynthesis such as amino acids or nucleic acid precursors and even uh, some particular nutrient assimilation pathway okay so that is why these oxytrophs are called as nutritional mutants nutritional mutants they are devoid of the uh, particular uh, enzymes requirement for the amino acids or for any nucleic acid precursor synthesis or nutrient nutrient assimilation okay so for an example if you see uh, trip minus oxytroph okay so this trip minus oxytroph lacks the enzyme uh, essential for the tryptophan amino acid biosynthesis okay so uh, these uh, trip minus oxytroph right they cannot be grown in the trip minus oxytroph so they cannot be grown in the uh, minimal media that is in the minimal media we should go for the addition of in the minimal media trip amino acid the tryptophan amino acid needs to be added into the minimal media for um, the trip minus oxytroph to grow into that plate okay so that is why if you see that uh, this uh, oxytrophs cannot be raised in minimal media alone okay it requires the addition of the required uh, amino acids or any nucleic acid precursors based on the genotype of the oxytroph okay so if you see that uh, there are several oxytrophic mutants available with saccharomyces cerevisiae cells okay so which has to be isolated purified screened okay so in order to get the genetically purified strains of the oxytrophic mutants so these oxytrophic mutant cells of saccharomyces have various um, applications right in this uh, molecular biology experiments and all okay the yeast or chemo organotrophs so what are chemo organotrophs so these chemo organotrophs can you organic compounds as the source of energy and they do not require sunlight to grow okay and uh, if you see this saccharomyces cerevisiae especially especially the saccharomyces cerevisiae so they are facultative anaerobe okay so generally uh, they prefer alcoholic uh, fermentation mode of nutrition which is anaerobic mm, whenever there is the fermentable carbon sources or available in the media okay when these fermentable uh, carbon sources are being utilized by the cells for the um, anaerobic process right and the 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 nutrients would be exhausted the fermentable carbon sugars would be exhausted okay so after the exhaustion after the exhaustion when there is when there are no fermentable carbon sugars uh, available the cell, the cells needs to switch to the respiratory mode of nutrition so that is why these saccharomyces cerevisiae are facultative anaerobes so they they are uh, anaerobes but they can also be um, aero they can also go into the aerobic mode okay uh, so sometimes they are uh, aerobes also okay but they generally 
remember this saccharomyces cerevisiae prefers alcoholic uh, fermentation mode of nutrition okay uh, so uh, under uh, this uh, due to the availability of this fermentable sugars in the media okay so if you see that what are the fermentable carbon sources glucose galactose raffinose lactose sucrose and all okay so during the fermentation process uh, ethanol are being produced right so through alcoholic fermentation okay after glycolysis pro process pyruvates are being pr produced then then the pyruvates um, produces the ethanol during uh, anaerobic condition right so through fermentation process so whenever there are non fermentable carbon sources also when whenever the fermentative fermentable carbon sources are exhausted in the media then the respiratory mode the aerobic mode of nutrition would be preferred that is the pyruvate enter uh, would enter into the krebs cycle process right so through krebs cycle the um, uh, oxidative phosphorylation occurs which uh, utilizes the um, pyruvate right for uh, more atp production co2 production and all which is the which is the aerobic mode of nutrition okay so this is this uh, respiratory mode is not preferred at all when there is the availability of fermentable sugar in the media okay so we have seen already that the saccharomyces cerevisiae prefers alcoholic fermentation mode okay so what happens but when these fermentable carbon sources are being exhausted for the alcohol production then the cell needs to switch to the other mode of nutrition which is the respiratory mode right uh, so that is why these saccharomyces cerevisiae are facultative anaerobe okay uh, so based on the nutrient availability the metabolism switches occurs so this dioxic shift refers to the switch in metabolism switch in metabolism from fermentative to the respiratory when whenever the uh, fermentable carbon sources uh, nutrient sources are being exhausted in the media the cell needs to switch to the um, metabolism from fermentative to the respiratory okay so this um, dioxic shift process uh, slows down the growth of the yeast cells so the dioxic shift process slows down the growth of the yeast cells so this process requires the upregulation of the genes involved in the respiratory breakdown of ethanol and other non fermentable carbon sources as well as the down regulation of the genes involved in the alcoholic fermentation so if you see you can see a clear dioxic shift uh, that has resulted in the slowing down of the growth of the yeast cells so if you see that the time of growth is plotted in the x axis and the optical density at 600 nanometer is being plotted on the y axis so this od 600 nanometer is directly proportional to the growth of the cells so you can see that there is a slow down in the growth after 18 hours which is represented over here in this graph okay so the growth slows down after the dioxic shift here after some 18 hours due to the exhaustion of the fermentable carbon sources the growth of the yeast cells slows down okay like these yeast cells have haploid uh, phase of growth as well as diploid phase of growth um, and if you see the haploid um, phase cells of yeast there are a cell types and alpha cell types so there would be interconversion of this uh, different uh, cell types that is the a cell can be converted to alpha cells and the vice versa like that is the alpha cell into a cell can occur so this uh, event is called mate type switching event this conversion event from 
uh, alpha cell to a cell or vice versa is called as mating type switching event okay so this uh, mating type switching event if you see the uh, molecular biological background of this uh, mating type switching event this is due to the mat locus m a t this is due to the mat locus okay so mating type locus mating type locus so this these uh, mat alleles okay are present in the chromosome 3 or present in the chromosome 3 okay uh, so this mat um, a mat a allele is functional mate mat a allele is functional in the mat a cells right if you see the cells alpha uh, if you see that a cells right if you see that a cells then they have the functional mat a allele the functional uh, mating type locus a allele is functional in case of mat a cells so if you go in case of mat alpha cells then mat alpha allele would be functional okay so these mat locus the mat locus okay uh, determines the uh, type of the cells haploid cells whether it is a or alpha so this mat allele is the functional form of the um, allele okay uh, whereas uh, you have the other locus which is called as hm r a and hm l alpha hm r a and hm l alpha so if you see that these uh, homothallic mating right and left loci okay homothallic mating right in case of hmr a whereas hml alpha is homothallic mating left alpha okay so these hmr a and hml alpha loci or silent type mating casts so they are also present in the chromosome 3 okay uh, if you see that they have they are silent type mating cast because they lie in the heterochromatin region this um, allele right this hmr a and hmr l alpha they lie in the heterochromatin region and they are transcriptionally silenced so that is why they are silent type mating casts so if you see that the hmr a consists of silenced copy of mat a allele okay and whereas if you see the hml alpha loci consist of the silenced copy of the mat alpha allele okay so that is why these homothallic mating right and left loci are called as silent type mating casts okay so uh, the mate type switching event okay requires the participation of the important enzyme called as ho endonuclease which is known which is known as homothallic switching dna endonuclease so it is the endonuclease so which is involved in the mating type switching in the mat locus so what is its function this uh, ho endonuclease function it is going to catalyze the formation of double stranded break at the mating type locus to initiate the gene conversion event as you can see over here the gene conversion event what is that gene conversion event the alpha to a a to alpha requires the participation of the important enzyme which is an endonuclease enzyme which is called as ho endonuclease so when only this uh, ho endonuclease participation occurs that would be the mating type switching event okay so which catalyzes the double stranded break formation and all so here you can see 
the conversion of a mat a cell into mat alpha cells that is the cells having the functional uh, mat alpha allele how this interconversion occurs this is due to the participation of the ho endonuclease here you can see the um, uh, silenced copy of the mat alpha alleles or or present in the hml alpha right so here the uh, chromosomal break occurs right so the gene conversion event would be initiated through this ho endonucleases which then converts this a cell into the alpha cells the functional copy of mat alpha is then introduced okay so this is one of the uh, main event may mating type switching event okay which uh, shifts the cell type okay so which requires the participation of this homothallic switching dna endonuclease okay uh, if you see that this ho gene is tightly regulated these uh, tight uh, there is a tight regulation gene regulation for this ho gene and which is highly haploid specific gene this ho gene is highly tightly regulated haploid specific gene so that is only activated in the haploid cells during the g1 phase of the cell cycle okay if you see that the laboratory strains many of the laboratory strains of uh, saccharomyces cerevisiae um, is devoid of this is lacking this lacking this ho endonuclease because um, if this ho endonuclease is there inside that strain then the mating type switching event can occur right so that is why the laboratory strains do not require the mating process right the genetically purified cells needs to be maintained for the experiments right so that is why the laboratory strains of saccharomyces cerevisiae is devoid that is lacks this ho endonuclease lacks this ho endonuclease okay the one of the important aspect with the east genetics is that the east 2 hybrid system tool okay so this east 2 hybrid system this experiment is being conducted to study whether uh, two proteins under study say protein x and protein y or interacting or not okay whether that protein x and y are putative interacting partners or not so these protein uh, interaction studies can be made using the east 2 hybrid system tool okay so what is the principle behind this east 2 hybrid system so the answer lies in the uh, gal4 transcriptional activator okay so this gal4 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 is the transcriptional factor which is the activator so which is the transcriptional activator of what gene it is going to activate what gene is going to activate the lac c gene so gal4 is the transcriptional activator of the lac c gene so it's going to activate the transcription of the lac c gene so this gal4 has transcription activation domain and dna binding domain so like uh, these uh, domains uh, dna binding domain and transcriptional activation domain um, they can be uh separated and once they are in proximity once they are uh, reconstituted their uh, complete function can be uh, regained right that is um, on the reconstitution of dna binding domain and transcription activation domain the functional gal4 transcription activator can be formed so by exploiting this the bait vectors which is having um any one of the domain either dna binding domain or transcription activity can be developed and the other vector the prey vector the bait and the prey okay 
so the bait is going to catch the prey if that uh, protein Y is putatively interacting. Okay, so the construct would be made in such a way that the domain, any of the domain, say in this case the DNA binding domain, which is given in this image, it is given in the dark blue color, right? Which is the DNA binding domain is fused with that protein X, right? And the other one. Uh, the prey, the prey vector. In that prey vector, we have this light blue color, right? Which is the transcription activation domain. This fused with the protein Y. Okay. So if these two vectors are co-transformed into the yeast cells, and when this protein X interacts with the protein Y, then uh, due to the close proximity of this protein X and Y, the reconstitution of the function of this uh, uh, GAL4 is going to happen because uh, the protein X and Y are now interacting. Then uh, these domains are going to be in the close proximity and the reconstitution of the GAL4 transcriptional activation activator occurs. So this functional GAL4 due to the interaction of the protein X and Y, right, in this case. So as you can see here, the orange and the green, so which represents the X and Y proteins respectively. So there is, if they are interacting, then the functional um, GAL4 transcriptional activator is going to form, which is going to activate the LAGZ gene. So what is then going, uh, going to happen if the exgals are being added into the media, which is the chromogenic substrate. Um, so this beta galactosidase gene, which is produced from the LACZ, is going to metabolize that uh, exgal. Then on the product, right, the exgal substrate, which is the chromogenic substrate, is going to release the colored product, the blue colored product, right? So the colonies turn blue upon interaction with X and Y due to the functional GAL4 formation. Okay, um, fine. So that is why the interacting partners can be identified through this E2 hybrid system. So what happens when protein X and Y do not interact? When X and Y do not interact, as you can see here, um, this protein X and Y are not putative uh, protein partners which are interacting, right? So they are not at all interacting. The protein X and Y, if they do not interact, then the functional GAL4 is not going to be formed, right? There won't be functional GAL4. No functional GAL4 right <clears throat> so that functional GAN4 is not going to be formed then the lag Z cannot be transcribed and the blue colored product cannot be resulted from exgal substrate right then the colonies remain white okay so this uh, is two hybrid system is one the most important tool for studying the protein-protein interaction. So nowadays, these three hybrid systems are also available to study the protein-protein interactions. So here you can see uh, the positive control of the E2 hybrid system experiment. Here you can see the uh, vector which is having both binding domain and activator domain uh, on co on expression you will have the functional GAL4 formation and the lag Z gene would be activated and the blue color colonies are formed. So which is a positive control. Um, and uh, in the second case, as you can see here, um, which is which represents the bait vector constrict. So the bait vector constricts, which has the uh, binding domain in it, right? The GAL4 binding domain in it. So this uh, vector, which is having only the binding domain also it's not going to result in the lag z transcription uh, so there won't be blue colonies right there would be only white colonies okay there won't be any blue colonies and also which is also 
the other case uh, in which there is only prey right there you have only that activation domain right so they in that um, you have only one uh, domain that is the activation domain so there also uh, no transcription right so no transcription and this one is the positive control so for an experiment you should maintain the positive control as well as a negative controls so the positive controls uh, implies the uh, positive ensures the positive results of the experiment what is the uh, expected result like the protein y x and y if they are putative interacting partners then that would result in blue color colonies okay so that is why the vector having this both binding domain and activation domain uh, serves as the positive control for the experiment and then in the actual experiment if you see in that uh, in the experimental part if you see the uh, vectors uh, with the activation domain that is fused with the protein x and the weight vector which is uh, which is having the binding domain is fused with y protein or so if they are co-transformed into the yeast and if these uh, bait binds with prey that is if protein x and y are interacting then only the functional gal4 is formed okay so that is why the yeast 2 hybrid system is a very very useful to to study the protein protein interactions uh, so with this elements of yeast genetics class um, we have seen the um, very basic aspects with the yeast genetics right thank you